saw it's warming up it's almost springtime so I thought today would be the perfect time to do a little educational video on ceramic coatings because I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna take your cars out now for the summer and protecting them is important making them look cool is even better so today I'm gonna be answering 10 I think they're pretty popular questions about ceramic coatings I posted a poll on my Instagram a few weeks ago asking you guys what you thought or what questions you had so it's a mix of those and then a couple things I think are important and Hopefully we'll cover all the bases so at the end of this you guys can be a little bit more informed on ceramic coatings and if it's right for your vehicle or your project. Question number one, and probably the most commonly asked one, what is a ceramic coating? So it is a liquid polymer that's going to create a semi-permanent bond to your vehicle's paint, much like a seal and a wax. It's liquid, so it's hand applied, but it's gonna last a lot longer and give you a lot better protection than both of those. A ceramic coating is gonna give you a lot better protection against more aggressive elements like environmental fallout, bird droppings, acid rain, bug guts, things that a seal and a wax aren't really gonna have a chance standing up against, as well as it's gonna give you a ton of self-cleaning properties, so your vehicle's gonna stay cleaner longer, but then when you go to wash it and maintain it, it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier to do so. I like to look at a ceramic coating as a sacrificial, a very hard sacrificial layer between your car's paint and all the nasty environmental abuse that your vehicle is going to take. Something that you don't really have to worry about as much because you know your OEM car paint and clear coat is safe underneath. The second question is entirely personal preference because there's about a thousand different products out there and a thousand different ways to answer this. But it is what is my favorite ceramic coating to use and I'm going to answer this in two parts because I think that makes the most sense for me. The first coating I'm going to mention is Avalon King Armor Shield and this is considered an entry level ceramic coating but all that means is that it's super affordable, super easy to apply and it gives you really really awesome results. Everything you need is just in this compact, very well packaged box. There's a 30 milliliter bottle of coating, your applicator brick, microsuades and it even comes with a card to tuck the microsuades into the brick which I've never actually seen any company do other than Avalon King which I love. The instructions and then a microfiber towel to help you remove the coating during the flashing process. This coating you can use in one layer, two layer, even three layers and beyond but beyond three it becomes a little bit excessive and not necessary. It's going to last you a year onward and that is entirely dependent on how you take care of your vehicle. Is it garage kept? Do you drive it daily? Do you drive it in the winter? Is it washed weekly? There's about a hundred different factors that are going to affect how not just this coating, but any coating lasts on your vehicle. The second coating I'm going to mention is a lot more complicated to apply, a lot more expensive, but it should give you a bit longer lasting results. And that is Miyabi Coat and ISM2 by Kamikaze. Same concept as this, but there's going to be two different products you're going to be applying and layering, so you have to deal with cure times in between. They're a bit more finicky to remove in the process, and they're about quadruple the price of Armor Shield by Avalon King. So it's really up to you. This could last you a bit longer, but also if you're treating your vehicle quite poorly, they may end up lasting the same amount of time. But if you do want to try a more professional, more complicated coating, this is the one I'd suggest. I've only been using it for about a month now, and I don't have any videos on it because I haven't been posting many detailing videos. However, in weeks to come, as cars start to come out of storage, there's going to be more detailing videos and I'm going to show you how this one performs. Question number three, and one people get very confused about very often, is do you need to polish paint before applying a ceramic coating? And the answer is absolutely not. What you do need to do is decontaminate that paint as much as possible, meaning removing any debris, iron removal, tar removal, clay bar, basically get that paint as clean as possible to promote the best adherence between the clear coat and the ceramic coating that you're applying. Yes, polishing can further that process and clean the paint even more to promote a better bond, but is it necessary? No. If you like the condition your paint's in, all you need to do is decontaminate it and you can apply that ceramic coating on top, making the job a lot more feasible and a lot more doable at home. If you do want perfect paint, you can get a polisher, hire a detailer to polish your paint and get a much better finish, but is it necessary? Absolutely not. Following up 
on the last question, the next one is, can you apply a ceramic coating at home? And the answer is, absolutely, you can, of course. So detailing obviously is a massive industry and detailers want to make money, as they should, but sometimes I find they overcomplicate the process and kind of imply that it needs to be done by them and you shouldn't do it at home on your own. But installing a ceramic coating is one of the easiest things to do and I believe anyone can do it at home in their garage or in their driveway. The complication comes when you get into paint correction where experience really does show. So if you want your vehicle to be improved visually before that coating gets applied, a detailer is probably your best option. But if you just want to get your vehicle protected and get the ceramic coating on it, you can 100% do it yourself at home. The next question is, do ceramic coatings prevent or resist scratching? And the answer is mostly no, but kind of yes for a couple different reasons. The first one being a ceramic coating has a ton of self-cleaning properties. So normally when a car gets dirty, it sticks to the paint, it's hard to rinse off. And when you eventually go to use a wash mate on it, you're rubbing it into the paint, which is what causes our scratching and marring on our vehicles. When that car is coated, there's so many self-cleaning properties that the vehicle is initially already cleaner. When you go to rinse it, even more of that debris comes off. So when you finally go to touch the paint, there's very minimal between there, which inherently is resisting or minimizing scratching as much as possible. The second reason that it can resist scratching is when you have certain car paints that are super, super soft, certain Porsche paints, Toyota, a lot of Japanese vehicles have super soft black paints. That clear coat is so soft that when you apply the ceramic coating, it's actually going to be harder, meaning typically you're going to have less scratching on that ceramic coating as you would the paint because it's harder, which inherently means it is resisting scratches in a way. But are they designed to completely keep your vehicle scratch free? Absolutely not. So the biggest concern when you're applying your own ceramic coating at home or even as a detailer is high spots on the paint. That's basically the biggest thing that can go wrong and the most concerning. A high spot is basically when you're leveling up the coating, you leave a little smudge of it on the paint, it cures, gets hard, and leaves kind of like a little bit of an oil slick or rainbow effect on the paint. A lot of people say you have to wet sand them to remove them, but I've never run into a scenario when that's the case. It's basically just a light polish remove it, re-IPA the area, and then re-coat it. It's super simple and really isn't a concern at all. I did one on the hood of my E34 here, so I'm gonna show you that in a second, and I'm gonna show you how simple it really is to remove and how it really shouldn't be that big of a concern. This is the high spot I went ahead and left on the E34. You can see it right there in the light. I did this one super, super thick. I basically wiped it on and then just didn't remove it. If you're actually applying the coating to the car, what's gonna happen is you're gonna leave a light smudge, ideally. So this one should be a lot harder to remove than typical, but all I'm gonna do, take a polisher, a yellow pad, which is a light polishing pad, a little bit of polish, and I'm gonna show you that it takes about two passes over this to get rid of it entirely, and then all you would have to do in reality is re-IPA this little part of the panel, recoat it, and you are good to go. That's literally it. Two light passes, one each direction. Wipe it off and it's gone. That spot I had left curing there for 48 hours, so it was basically entirely cured. And it was super simple to remove. So say you left 10 of those all over your car, it might take you 10, 20 minutes to fix all of them. IPA and then get it recoded. It's really not that big a deal at all. Shouldn't really have to be scared. Can a ceramic coating be applied to any surface on the vehicle? And the answer is yes but not every ceramic coating can be applied to every surface on your vehicle. So Avalon King Armor Shield, which we mentioned earlier, can go on your paint, your glass, your trims, and your wheels, basically covering every exterior surface on the vehicle, really furthering the affordability of this single product. The other option we mentioned, Miyabi Coat and ISM2, they can go on your paint, and they're very, very good at going on your paint. But if you want to protect your wheels, you're going to need to buy a wheel coating. If you want to protect your glass, you're going to need to buy a glass coating. And if you want to protect your trims, you are going to need to buy a trim coating. 
which is great because all these products are specifically designed for those applications and they're very, very good. However, it just becomes very, very expensive whether you're doing it DIY at home or if you're a business trying to cover this overhead with the price of your coding service. So it's really up to you. It's all personal preference. Single product, everything covered, really, really good results. Five products to cover a whole vehicle, really, really good results, just a bit higher of a price point. Despite which coating you choose to put on the car, something affordable, something super expensive, or literally anything in between, the only thing that's really gonna matter is how you choose to maintain the vehicle, as that's what's gonna allow you to prolong the life of the coating. So in my opinion, I believe the two bucket wash method is the best way to wash a car. There's a ton of other options out there that you can do research on that are super safe as well, but that's the one I choose to do. So rinsing the vehicle, applying a foam from a foam cannon, using two buckets to wash the vehicle with a mitt, rinsing the car, and then applying a drying aid, which is also a ceramic booster. Um, I prefer bead maker, but there's definitely a booster from every single company that makes a coating. There's a Kamikaze one, there's an Avalon King one, and basically any other coating brand that you might have in your car is gonna have a silica spray or a ceramic booster to put on after washes, which is basically going to add to that layer of ceramic and further protect the car, which is an awesome option to do after every wash, and it doesn't take very long. It's typically just a spray on and wipe it off the towel. The frequency at which you do the washes is gonna be entirely up to you and more so where you live. If you're, you're in a southern state and the weather is nice most of the time, you can get away with longer durations between washes, but if you're up here in Canada where the weather is typically atrocious, you may need to do a weekly wash, especially during the winter, to keep that salt and road debris off the car to make sure that coating lasts as long as possible. What about water spots? At this point, this video is kind of turning into 10 myths about ceramic coatings rather than 10 questions, but that's okay because this is another one that people get somewhat confused about, and that is, is your vehicle prone to water spotting if you have a ceramic coating? And the answer is yes, but it's also prone to it if it's not coated. So when your vehicle is coated, your water is typically gonna be in little spots, little beads on the paint. So if the sun came, dried this out, and baked it into the clear coat or the coating, it is gonna be spots because these are circles. What people don't consider is that when you don't have a coating on your car and the water is kind of more organically spread over it, that can still bake into the paint. The difference being it's gonna be baking into the clear coat, not the ceramic coating. In my experience, little minor water spotting on a ceramic coating is a heck of a lot easier to remove than aggressive water spotting that's in the clear coat, typically needing to be wet sanded out. So the answer is yes, you can get water spots on your ceramic coating, but you're not getting them because your car's coated. The structure of them is just happening because it's coated. They can happen to any car. The best way to prevent water spotting is just to get the water off the vehicle, whether it's coated or not, as quick as possible. You really don't want your car to be wet and sitting in the sun. It's not gonna be good for anyone. The final question. Ceramic coatings versus PPF. A lot of people ask which one you think they should get or what one's better for their car, and in my opinion they're not really comparable. Ceramic coatings on one hand are a detailing product. They're designed to help you maintain the vehicle easier. Self-cleaning properties, they allow you to wash the car much easier, keep the car looking better for a lot longer. Paint protection film on the other hand is designed to actually protect the paint from road debris, rock chips, things that are going to be flying at the vehicle on road or on track. So to compare the two I don't think it's really fair. Best case scenario, you have your vehicle paint protection filmed and then ceramic coated over top because you can do that and then it gives the paint protection film ceramic coated properties so you're going to be able to wash it and clean it much easier and you have basically full vehicle protection and it's the best absolute option. That doesn't mean just PPF or just the ceramic coating isn't a great option. Both of those are incredible products on their own, but when you do combine them they do become the kind of ultimate vehicle protection force. So those are the 10 things that I think would be pretty helpful back when I was first starting out ceramic coatings. Questions I had that I wasn't really aware of or couldn't find a proper answer to, and I hope they helped some of you guys as well. I left links to all the products I mentioned in the description below, as well as a few additional products like IPA sprays, ceramic sprays, and then some ceramic based soaps as well. 
all stuff in the realm of ceramic coatings that would help out if you're doing it at home or for your business. If you like this video, let me know and I'll try and do more of this, a little more informative or educational videos. If you made it this far, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.